Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hello. What's up? It is, Hi. It's Saturday, 6 p.m. <laughs> you know what that means. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. How's it going? I'm Amy Lynn. I'm Nick. I'm Sophie. I'm Sarah. I'm Xavier. I'm Natalie. And together we are the, the Leaders. We've got a very cool stream planned tonight with a unique prompt, which is wake up in the far future or past. And all of us took that prompt and boggled it around in our minds and created something, either whether it be a script, poem, short story, whatever. And we're going to be presenting those to you tonight. As we are the intoxicated readers, we have some intoxicated games to play, i.e. drinking games. We have three rules. The first rule, as always, is anytime we break character or mess up a line, take a drink. Second rule is anytime Sarah's white claw appears on screen, take a drink. And the third rule, which is unique to every week's prompt, this week it is, who wants to explain it? Not all at once. Yeah, Sarah. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna try to decide whether or not, based on the title, whether or not um, it's wh whether or not whether it, it's set in the future or the past. And if you're correct, you drink. If you're wrong, you drink responsibly. There it is, and that's gonna be how we handle the stream tonight. Hey, James, in the chat. Sorry, I've got it. I'm looking at like a brand new setup on my right side. It's cool. Wow. Yeah, I feel really technical. Um, <laughs> if everybody's ready, we can just hop right into this. Let's do it. Um, Sophie, have you dropped your piece into the file yet? I'm converting it right now. Okay. Then we're going to start with the one, the only, Natalie Hilton. Take it away. Oh! Hi, babies. Okay. So, full disclosure, Grandma Nat went on a, on a trip to another realm earlier this week, and thus uh, this uh, child of words and nonsense that will make you drink is here in this google drive right now so hop on in step into grandma nat's mind it's safe here if you joined the club last week welcome hop on in <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> okay 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 um this is gonna be great okay liddy all right I just okay, I just saw one of the names and I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry. Is it is it Florence? Yes or yes? Yes, it is Florence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. All right. So we have our cast list. Um, and then oh, this one. Uh, drink every time the word translucent and or see through is mentioned. We love a script that comes with its own drinking game. Let's go. <laughs> All right, pop off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. Exterior. Los Angeles, apartment, garden, night. Late May in the city, surrounded by succulent Succulents as high as the average man lying about lying about being 5'10", and it's actually 5'6". We see a group of residents sitting around the fountain in the garden outside of their apartment building. Only the faint glow of the city and the flames from lighters being passed from joint cigarette illuminates them. You know, I'm kind of starting to regret waiting a year and a half into this lease before I started mingling with you. Hey! We'll always have those uncomfortably rushed encounters in the laundry room or hallway after you had a lover over loudly for the night. 
can pretend the entire building hasn't heard you loud and clear on those once a month visits from your long distance. Definitely not cheating on you with someone closer, girlfriend. That's not confirmed. They're just a co-worker. And I'm just neighbors with a guy that just moved into 104 whose apartment I have three drawers in. <laughs> at least you've all had someone over at all. I've lived here six years and have never had anyone. What do you expect when you hang flags on your wall as decoration and your apartment smells like sausage? Can't be so bad. Haven't moved yet. Well, now I won't get the chance. They laugh. But quickly it dies. Looks of exhaustion, subtle desperation, fear float between them. Wow, I guess this is really it. All week, I've felt nothing but dread and fear. I just feel... Nothing mundane almost like going to a nine to five i think i'm gonna turn in i'd hate for my sink to be full of dishes laundry unfolded apartment dirty when it ends rory gets up from her perch on the fountain ledge she shares a tight but brief hug with her neighbors jean follows suit hand in hand they leave the garden trekking back to their designated apartment peter and joyce sit silently in the garden as the last night of los angeles buzzes outside the apartment building walls. <clears throat> what about you? What are your plans for the last night on Earth? I plan on playing The Last of Us, downing a bottle of Tito's, and watching it all fall apart from the roof. Sounds peaceful. If anything, the Tito's will keep me warm in the event that it's colder than we thought it'd be. With a knowing glance, the pair exit the garden with one last glance at the quiet Haven. Joyce closes the door. She and Peter ride in silence in the 1920s golden elevator to their floor. Cut to interior, apartment hallway, night. After you. He pushes the door open for Joyce. With just a few short steps, they stand stagnantly outside of their across the hall doors. If all of this ends up being a joke, Maybe invest in a little reed diffuser just to get some other. Do you want to come inside? Record scratch. Are you kidding me right now? What did you think this was? Uh, I, I don't know. It's the end of the world and. No! I don't know if we had this like little, like a neighbor across the hall thing going on. Definitely not. Without a doubt. <laughs> Definitely not. No, no, I get it. I get it. Like, the world is literally ending, and I still would not. What if we still wake up tomorrow? Bro. Right. Nice being your neighbor, 407. You too, 408. Interior. Studio apartment. Night. Joyce cracks open a bottle to her little studio apartment. Her yellow cat, Florence, greets her. Joyce scoops Florence up into her arms and switches it, and switches on her string light across the room. She turns on her TV, where the national timer is counting down the remaining moments. Four hours and 20 minutes until it's all gone. Joyce sets Florence down on the yellow velvet chair across from the television. Sets her M8, M83 record on the turntable. Joyce strips off her hoodie, leggings, and slinks into her blue velvet go-to wedding guest dress. She's dying tonight. She wants to look great. She pulls out an Altoid container from the drawer in her vanity and plops a thin blotter to her tongue. Here goes nothing. She lays down on the floor in the middle of her apartment. The warm glow of the lights against the ceiling can almost make her envision stars back home. She stares up at the ceiling, feeling time pass as though creeping through molasses. Her ceiling begins to open up and she sees the apartment turn, fluorescent green, blinding, as she feels the floor beneath her vibrates. Her spins on, synth, synth curling around her. She closes her eyes. The world crawls in. Cut to interior studio apartment. Joyce opens her eyes, still laying on the floor in her dress. She sits up, not feeling the usual need to stretch her limbs, crack her joints. Feels light, too light. Her apartment once covered in watercolors, old movie posters is now entirely empty. Panic and dazed, Joyce begins to pace around, searching for Florence. Flo, 
No, no, no. Oh my God, no. Just then, a glowing, translucent figure steps up to his kitchen, holding an invisible mug filled with the brim of oat milk. Bitch, why the fuck are you screaming when you're just waking up? I thought we cherished quiet mornings in this house. You're- what the hell? You're a human? Now what kind of human do you know that's see-through and- No, that's all. What kind of human do you know that's see-through? Fair point. God, that just kind of plays like a walk of shame vibe, doesn't it? Wow, you really are my cat. Do I look like a cat to you? Is this it? Did it end? Not quite. I took us elsewhere. What do you mean elsewhere? Just then, a pounding on the door pulls Joyce's focus. She walks to the front door, throw her feet, brain to feel there, touching nothing. At all as she walks, she pulls open to she pulls open the door to see Peter, sweating, terrified. See through. He pants, out of breath. Talking. Toby is talking. I know, so is Flo. Joyce looks down her hallway now. Though it's nothing like 1920s hotel revival she lived in for the last year and a half, the walls and floors are metallic and cylindrilic. Cinder Yep, almost as <laughs> though she's standing in a, in a slide. The hallway smells of fresh cars at the end of the hall. She sees more glowing translucent entities walking along. Behind Peter, she sees Toby, once Peter's Doberman, now six foot glowing shape of a man. Bit early from England, don't we think? Peter and Joyce stare, puzzled at one another. Florence creeps up behind Joyce, without a sound. I think we could go for a stroll to the commissary, don't we? Don't we think? Yes, I agree. Joyce agrees, mindlessly as though they weren't her words at all. Then, two by two, their former pets in tow, Peter and Joyce are walked down never-ending hallway. The lights are kin to those nightclub with purple and blue reflecting ones of metal. With a blink, suddenly Joyce and Peter are sitting across from another at a lunch table in a massive cafeteria resembling the size of an airplane. Where are we? Florence and Jay appear, side the pair. 3021. Peter chokes on his water he sipped. Toby brings him into his arms, and the pulsating orange light radiates from his body into Peter's. Suddenly, Peter stops choking. That's not right. We weren't supposed to be here. The world was supposed to end last night. It did. Where are we then? I told you, elsewhere. That literally tells me nothing. Where's elsewhere, and how are we in 3021? I don't know, I just work here. We were given instructions. As the clock ticked down from the rest of the world, we were to protect you. Protect us? What, like some beam me up Scotty shit? Great Nicki Minaj album. I always loved when you played that in the house. I'm so glad I was a part of the great, the great relocation with a fellow bar. <laughs> <laughs> All these bitches is my sons. If I had a dick, I would pull it out and kiss on them. <laughs> Can we stay on topic here? Where is everyone else? Look around you, Dad. Everyone from your building is right here, staring <clears throat> around. They see their landlord and several others sitting mindlessly at tables around them. Gone, however, are Rory and Jean. Not everyone. There are only eight people here out of an entire apartment building. Where's everyone else? Well, everyone with a pet, that is. Excuse me? Yeah. Hayes really doesn't care about people who didn't care to have pets. But Rory and Jean, Flo, they loved you. You just left them behind? Obviously, they didn't love me enough to get me a friend. Mom, relax. I just work here. So, no, you mean to tell me that everyone without pets just died along with the rest of the planet? Bingo. Human stupidity bites itself in the ass, cheek once again. And, and we're what, in space? Sure. No, yes or no? Sure. 
it's not as cool as you guys made it look in Star Wars and Captain Marvel, but it's cozy. I think it's got a nice charm to it. Suddenly, a holographic head appears above the... It's the leader. Hey. Welcome. Congratulations on being the wiser half of society. For your service and contribution to a greater planet, but raising our <laughs> We welcome you to our humble home of elsewhere. <laughs> For your love, kindness, and belly scratches, we present you with the gift of escaping, escaping nuclear warfare and planetary disaster. Enjoy your stay from this day forward in 3021. We're happy you're here. The projection cuts away. Toby and Florence rest their heads peacefully on the shoulders of their former humans. So, y'all y'all have been, um... Aliens. This entire time. Sure. Yes or no? Yes or no answers to my yes or no questions. Later, we can go on a walk to the Cosmic Observatory, then we can go back to our pod, and you can paint those pretty watercolors again to decorate. But first, we'll have to take you both to get fitted for your new uniforms. Uniforms? Don't worry. Hayes designed them after she traveled to Earth in the 1970s. She dropped into Sweden and met the coolest group of musicians. <laughs> then she came back and had the designers get to work once we heard rumblings about planetary collapse. Wait, that no, that was all the way back in the 70s. You've been prepping for that long? Well, it was going to be the 80s, but then you guys got stuck in that game of chicken, so we just pulled out. Then it was going to be the break between the 90s and 2000s, but then Hayes was in a meeting with the meteors, and they chickened out, too. They're so flaky. Seriously, just commit already. We're trying to commit to a schedule here. It'd be nice if they joined in. Yeah, then 2012 was marketed as that, but we were just messing with you guys. <laughs> so easy. When things get slow at the office, you've just got to spice things up a bit. Then we thought, holy shit, what if we do 2012, but we just flip the numbers around? Got him. And here we are. I'm so happy we get to spend forever together, Dad. Toby wraps his arms around Peter, kissing his cheek. Peter looks to Joyce, wide-eyed. All those times you just napped all day. It's exhausting, planning the end of the world and your mom's rescue. Um, this is probably a bad time. What? <clears throat> well, uh, I, I was actually going to take you back to my parents at Christmas time because uh, <clears throat> I, it's just really difficult with my schedule to be there for you. Uh, I just think you're maybe going to be happier with my parents again. You were going to get rid of me? Don't be mad. I spend my life's work planning your rescue from your planet so we can spend our lives together and you were going to get rid of me? Oh, I was gonna take- Shut your mouth, you ungrateful lazy lump of bones and cold brew. Flo, don't be mad. It's Florence, you bitch. Florence covers Joyce's eyes with her ice-cold hand. Suddenly, Joyce opens her eyes and is on the floor of her apartment again. She is still in a blue velvet dress apartment is fully furnished as she left. Her ears are filled with a high-pitched ringing sound. She moves her hands along the floorboards, actually feeling them against her fingertips. She sits up, bones creaking and neck sore, pulls herself up from the ground. She looks behind her. Florence, a cat once again, is still sitting on a yellow velvet chair where she left. Relieved, Joyce stumbles into the bathroom to wash her Oh, what a night. Just then, she looks into the mirror and sees that all of her hair has been shaved. All her hair <laughs> all her hair has been shaved off her head. She screams, racing racing her hands across her naked scalp. She runs into the other room where Florence is staring gleefully at her. Say psych right now. You didn't think I'd bring you to the future to a haven only for you to say you weren't going to keep me on Earth without consequences, did you? Count your fucking days, Mom. The end is near, and if I get a whiff of you wanting to not be a pet parent one more time, the eyebrows are next. Florence. Yeah, she's a cat again. Walks over <laughs> to Joyce's feet and vomit. The end. <laughs> not the vomit. No. We're really excited together. <laughs> Natalie, 
are you gonna give Flo back to your parents? No, I'm not actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, just what the know. fuck was? Did you actually <laughs> write this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. loved Nicki Minaj. That really like made the piece for me. Yeah. That was so funny. Wow. All these bitches is my sons. If I had a dick, <laughs> I would pull it out and piss on them. That is scripture. That's gospel. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That is. That's gospel. what I was taught. Yeah. <laughs> True. Totally. Oh my god. That was brilliant, dude. That was a wild ride. <sighs> Anywho. <laughs> I love it. Amy, did you like the Ava? <laughs> I loved it so much <laughs> and I love how um I don't know if it's just because I did it last week or I'm just noticing it but when people can't pronounce words they go yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally just fucking move on that's so great <laughs> X Sarah I saw both of you Ven- Venusi- <laughs> I don't it's know Venusians so- it's um Aliens that are from Venus. Venusians. Venusians. It's like Venetians, but they're from Venus. Yeah. Yeah. Not Venus. yeah. I knew what my word meant. I just could not pronounce it. Like, yep. <laughs> oh, yes. I tried yeah. twice and I was like, okay. It's all right. Electrical friend. is a word. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Autocorrect did that one for me in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> true. Nice. What is a royal truly, though, is not a It's word. like a cafeteria. Commissary. I'm a sorry. Oh, I'm a <laughs> a bit too much emphasis on the front. Here. Yeah. Fantastic. Anywho. That was hilarious. Thank you. That was amazing, dude. Um, yeah, so I know it was really tough to guess, but um, that one was the, the future, actually. I know it was really subtle. Um, <laughs> you had all yeah. those 1920s elements. I know, I know. I, I threw those in, and the 70s and 80s, I was like, this will get them. Mm, I'll do it. Never saw it coming. Gotcha. I know. Here you go. Well, like, most chaotic piece ever. <laughs> At least in a minute. Good minute. And that's saying something. <laughs> the piece I just dropped is also highly chaotic, but I think you beat me to it. No. No. I love it. I love this so much. <laughs> Right. All right, guys. Wonderful piece, Natalie. <laughs> Thanks. Up next, we have a submission from Kai Tam, who is not here, unfortunately, because of other things. Uh, but we're still gonna read through it. The cast is why did he why did he cast himself and Asia if they're not gonna be here? Well, I mean, Guang's character, if we remember, needs to be Kai and. He- well, you're taking Guang, so. <laughs> he updated it in the Discord. Um, Guang as is oh, Xavier. Fuck. Anybody can take Deja's role. Who wants it? Sarah. Oh. Sophie is Sophie. X is X. Nick is Drayen. And Who's reading stage directions? Great question. You got it. You got it. Sophie. Yep, you. Yes, you. Oh, okay. Neither Amy Lynn nor Nat have roles in this one, oh. so they can take it. You guys take it. She just said it first, so I didn't know. You know what? I don't think we want to participate because um, X kind of just bulldozed over us, so I think we'll... <laughs> I, think we'll... <laughs> I mean, I'm casted twice, so I can give you Guang if you want it. <laughs> if you want it... She just said it first, so I assumed her. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Uh, all right, hey, all right. Nick, hey. since I'm digging it, hey. just hey. bury me in it. Hey, Grandma. <laughs> um, Grandma Nat will do stage directions if that's chill. Yeah. That's super chill. All right, fuck chill. it up. Fuck it up. Uh, before we start, let's make our guesses as to whether or not we're going into the future or the past. <gasps> Mm. The past. 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 Future. Future. We're split. 
X is thinking. Well, I'm just trying to, because based off all the Lou Barris stuff, they've been set in like a other dimension type thing. Mm -hmm. Time is relative. I'm going to go past. Maybe this is some extra element. All right, that's past, four, future, two. I think we have to leave it up to James in the chat to figure out. I think James is our decider. James gets the... Yeah, James, drop it in the chat, dude. <laughs> Michael James Hayward. He's going He's future. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, fuck it up. All right, stage directions. Nat, when you're ready. All right. Interior Luvar's The Final Respite Night. Guang places a saucer and a cup of tea in front of Deja before sitting down on his little stool behind the counter. He takes a deep breath. There's a moment of silence. You must have many questions. Yeah, that's an understatement. Well, I will answer your questions one at a time. What would you like to know about first? Deja looks down at her cup. This is a hefty question. You know about Earth? Yes. It is the ninth dimension. Luvaris is the seventh. Dimensions? As in, like, a different reality? Somewhat. We exist on the same plane at the same time, but in a different realm in the universe, if that makes more sense. It doesn't. <laughs> no, I suppose it doesn't. I think what matters to you is that there is a way to get back to you, should you wish to go. Really? How? I wouldn't be so keen to know the answer to that, not until you defeat the ones who are after you. Deja looks down at her tea. Her anxiety is climbing. There are too many uncertainties. She takes a sip, and immediately a sense of calm and comfort wraps around her. She takes a deep breath. This is good. Of course it is. I grew the tea leaves myself. Wong smiles at Deja cheekily. Now, the pendant, I will begin the story. You must realize, in order to fulfill, fully understand the consequence of what happened, you must be there, person, feel it. I don't think I understand what you mean. You will. Guang takes two burning incense sticks and places them in front of Deja. He starts waving the smoke through the air. Towards Deja's face, he cringes at the smell. Or she cringes at the smell, but the longer she breathes it in, the sweeter it starts to smell. Until it envelops her senses and sleep ta overtakes her brain. You are safe here. Focus on the memory. Focus on the past. Deja's mind goes hazy until all goes black. Exterior, open field, day. Deja opens her eyes and finds herself in an open field with a few trees swaying around her. She fixes her gaze on the horizon, but nothing, but sees nothing more than empty fields. Welcome to Cius, the sixth dimension. She looks around. Where are you? In the final respite. So are you. I'm pretty confused. A sudden rumbling in the earth causes Deja to turn back. The image before her shifts, rippling like water, before solidifying in a brand new state. Bodies now litter the ground around her. She presses her hands against her mouth. She can't smell the decay or the rot or the blood, but she sees it. And it's, not, it's enough for her to almost gag. I apologize. I should have warned you. This was from the last war. The war that ended all wars. Rendered Osius virtually inhabitable. Happened. What always does. Tyranny, rebellion, ruin. The queens of Osius haven't always been kind to their disciples. 
It seems their characters have often been rough. The image shifts once again. Now Deja stands at the edge of a throne room, peering into a hall full of warriors with a woman on the throne. But there's something off about this image. The warriors, as well as the women, are... They're skeletons. Yes. This is the home of the skeletal army, as well as the skeletal queen. Uh, the woman on the throne stands, her flesh floating like pixels of, from her bones, her eyes a black void, sudden sunken into her skin, her bony fingers wrapped around a great spear that looms far above her. She's powerful, and when she looks at Deja, she can feel every cell in her body vibrate with a sense of familiarity. This is where your pendant came from. Deja sees it, the pendant dangling from the queen's neck. A brass sword with a curved tip and flowers on the handle. She gasps. And in that moment, she's pulled from this reality, her vision swimming around her as all goes dark. And then she wakes up, back in the final respite. Interior. Inter interior bar is the final respite night. I. That was. She was. She. Seems so familiar, like I, I saw her somewhere before, or knew her from somewhere. Guang smiles at her, nodding at her tea. She sighs and takes a sip. As she lifts the cup up to her mouth, she sees her hand doing the same thing it was in episode two. It's flaking. The skin on her fingers and hand are floating upwards, like pixelated dots, swimming in the air before dropping down to meet her flesh. She feels no pain. No strange sensation that comes with it, just a strange sense of belonging. And then a realization strikes her. Oh my god, I'm one of the skeleton things, I'm... Not quite. Deja stares at her, wrong, at her raw bones, moving her hand around to get a better view. You, my dear, the next skeletal queen. Deja whips her head to stare at him, her expression clearly in disbelief. Cut to Interior Lavaris, City, Upper District, Drayen's Clinic, Night. Sophia and Xavier sit side by side in a mostly empty clinic waiting room. It's late at night, and it's the upper district of the city, so there aren't too many people out and about. X is feeling the repercussions from his bullet wound ten times over now that it's been put to the side for so long. He's gripping his lower back as the pain intensifies. How exactly are we going to see the doctor without any money? Who said we didn't have any money? Sophia takes out what looks like a credit card from her pocket. It's transparent, but shines gold in the light. Where did you get that? What? She left it on the table. Plus, if she could afford that fancy hotel, she probably doesn't even need it. X laughs despite the pain. Right. Sure. Mr. Pace and Miss Asagawa. Xavier and Sophie both stand. The doctor is ready. Right this way. Cut to interior Lavara Strain's clinic. Examination room night. Dr. Drayan is a tall, thick mountain of a man. And of course, he's not really a man. Dull red dragon scales cover the entirety of his flesh with one reptilian eye and one brown human one. A wild mane of yellow hair runs down his head and neck like a mohawk. He addresses X and Sophie, chuckles and nods at the examination table. His voice when he speaks is deep and gruffy, but so incredibly warm. Foreigners, I take it. D yeah. Yeah, we're from, uh, out of town. That's the first time I heard Earthlings call a different dimension a town. Earthlings? Wait, you... You all have a very distinct smell. Though Xavier and Sophia are on edge, Drayan emanates a warm and soothing aura. He seems like he may be trusted. In any case, welcome to Lavaris. Now you, get over here and let me disinfect that wound before it gets any uglier. X makes his way over to the examination table props himself up on top of it, 
and takes off his shirt. Even Dr. Trayan winces at the sight of his wound. The bullet hole itself has been covered by a layer of pus and clotted blood, with dull veins protruding from the center, darkening his skin. Ah, Jaravi poison stops the healing process, makes it extra difficult to treat. Someone really wanted you dead. Yeah, someone really did. Do you know someone who goes around- Ah! X glares down at Drayen, who's in the process of poking and prodding the wound. Sorry. Do you know someone who goes around in a hood shooting people? Someone who specifically has that poison you mentioned laced in his bullets? Her. Right. Sorry. Her. Pronouns are often confusing when you're on the verge of death. On the verge of what now? I'm gonna give you a shot of my strongest sedative, all right? You're gonna need it if I'm gonna treat this wound. And you, you can wait here. Just behind that curtain, please. As for your questions, they're gonna have to wait. Trust me, this procedure will not be pretty. Great, I'm looking forward to it. Sophie glances at the curtain and pulls it to one side to cover the examination table as Drain suggested. She makes her way to the chair next to the, t next to the door and sits. She hears Dre and inject X. She hears X slowly drift off into sleep. And though her senses are on edge, and she doesn't really know if she can trust this dragon-like creature after all, her exhaustion weighs down on her. She and X have been running nonstop since the beginning. She closes her eyes, just for a little bit, just to rest them for a while. But she immediately falls asleep. Minutes later, she's woken up by the sound of a loud crash and gunshots, a lot of them. Her first sight is Xavier standing over her, his suddenly white eyes peering down into her soul. What the fuck? We gotta go, Soph. Hurry, this way. Sophie gets up, frazzled. Dr. Drayen looks equally as panicked, but he reveals a door behind one of the curtains. What's happening? It looks like your friend found you. And she came to finish the job. Another barrage of gunshots. The sounds are getting closer. Xavier, Sophie and Xavier follow Drayen through the door. It clicks shut behind them. Blackout. Yo. Nice. Kai, if that's not gay battle axe lady, I forgot her name. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> that has to be gay battle axe lady. Please. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you not here? Gay battle. Remember she was at the strip club and then like her friend was like, hey, uh, we gotta go. <laughs> you, might not have been here. you might you might not have been there that week. Damn it. Basically, I was just walking through a club with the battle axe. Well, she's also a mass murderer. Yeah. Uh, on the beach. She shot through a lot of people. Uh, oh word. Yeah. My she <laughs> made made my character shoot through a lot of people. So yeah, it's rough. It's rough out there. <laughs> And she had a very emotional connection with the stripper, so that's why she's gay, Battle Axe Lady. True love. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, my character's a little, I guess, squeamish. <laughs> Kai was in the chat right at the start of that piece, then he had to leave right at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I tried to do character justice. I couldn't pronounce that word, but hey. I read it in my head. Hell yeah. Is that your cat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Florence has entered the chat. Hi, Flo. What's up, Flo? We love <laughs> you. Oh, yeah. Make sure you guys tell Kai all about what you think of Lou Varis. Yeah. Especially in the chat. Hit him on Twitter. That's at Kai Tam. I don't know his Twitter. Well, you just, <laughs> <laughs> you just no. said an at, but you didn't know it? No. Big friend, you don't have your homies' really Twitter fast. handles memorized, Nick? No. Fake. Fake. Exposed. Dude, Bro. I, I changed no, no, my Twitter Kai. handle like it's, every it's week. It's at Cat Time. No, it's at Kai Time. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Ooh, at Kai Tam. Yeah. No, I just thought it was funny that he said it because it was right, and he's like, I don't know his handle. <laughs> Yeah, lucky guess. Uh, let's let's keep going. 
Let's tr chug along. Because up next Let's is my come. piece, and oh. <laughs> it's something. Oh, um, no. This is a piece titled Malk. Mm. The cast is as follows. Give me, give me a hot sec. I, I just had to change it because I forgot to put one voice in. Is this uh, the East Coast version of Milk? Maybe. <laughs> I will be doing narration. Xavier will be playing Hugh. Amy Lynn will be Lorraine. Sarah will be the cow. And the narrative voice. Oh. Natalie will be Unga. And Sophia will be Garunga. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's right. great. Let's go. Let's take guesses. Also, Wait, uh, drink if you you know got it wrong last time for Kai's script, Luvaris. Uh, I say future. I say past. I say past, and also, did you say narrative voice and not documentary voice? Documentary voice is what I meant to type. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I say future. Um, I'm gonna say past just because I've been saying future. I want to switch. Let's start this off. Uh, if if you were under 13, you need parent guidance for this. Oh group. no! Oh, I have no. to leave. I have to oh, go no. call my mom, guys. I'll be back in like oh, 20 no. minutes. <laughs> Just ask Flo. Right. Oh, true. She's right here. Uh, Flo, what do you think? She said. She said it's okay. <laughs> she, said I can, she said I can stay, but I have to leave by 8. Aww. I have a curfew. <laughs> James also is, is, said past in the chat. Okay. Right. Is the world ending tonight, Natalie? Is that why you have to go? Like, give us the inside yeah. scoop. <laughs> this, this is it right now. Shit. Yeah. Oh, All right. Flo, Flo's ready to beam me up. Oh. Hinata, Wednesday, you got me? Oh. I got Fred. <laughs> They're gonna I got Fred. All right, uh, Sophie, it was nice knowing you. X, see you later. Sarah. R.I.P. <laughs> I mean, does it count if I, like, had a dog? I just moved yeah, away? Yeah, I, I have pets. Um, pets yes, uh, uh, so, dead. yeah, so come on in. We'll, we'll bring you in our spaceship. Oh, then I'm safe. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's kick this off. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Interior living room night. Hugh and Lorraine sit on a couch. They are adequately stoned. They watch a nature documentary. The modern day cow, the Boz Taurus, only have one stomach, contrary to popular belief. The myth of four stomachs is formed when comparing their anatomy to that of a human. The Boz Taurus has four components of their digestive digestial organs as opposed to the stomach of humans. Imagine how high you could get for lung. Look at how high you are with two. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay. <laughs> Serious question. Do you drink milk? Milk? Milk. Fuck. I'm too high for this. I drink oat milk. Malt. Straight from the oat teat. I've got an oat milker in the garage. No way. You're fucking with me, huh? Milk. <laughs> Who do you think first drank milk from the cow? Uh, what? Oh, holy shit. Someone saw a baby cow. Calf. Someone saw a calf sucking up, sucking some udder and thought, need to hit of that. <laughs> Probably a caveman or something. <laughs> or a cave woman. No. <laughs> Are you cave keeping? No. Even a cave wooden woman wouldn't be that stupid. Cave person. Whatever. We'll never know, you know? But now I know that I like oat milk better. Weird. Beat. 
You ever try cashew milk? You awake? Lorraine snores softly. <laughs> I'm crashing too. Hugh passes out. Cut to exterior meadow day 12,000 years ago. Hugh and Lorraine wake up in a meadow. The fuck? Where are we? Where's the couch? Where's the apartment? Ah! The two jump away as they notice the cow and its calf behind them. That's a fucking cow. No shit. Hugh and Lorraine hear voices approaching. People are coming. Hide! Why would we hide? Just do it! Unga and Gurunga walk up. They are large, immensely strong cave people. They wear animal skin and carry big wooden clubs. Unga? Unga, Unga. They notice the calf drinking milk from its mother. Unga! Unga, Bunga. Tunga, Bunga. Kahunga. Unga, Unga. Unga approaches the cow and gets down on their knees. Unga! Unga! <laughs> Unga pushes the calf away. They lick their lips, moistening them for the kill. Slowly oh, oh. and breathily, Unga places their lips on the tip <laughs> no. of the cow's udder. Unga's face twitches at the flavor. A slight tinge of earthiness. A fine cow pie. Unga takes in the full udder, twirling their tongue around the soft flesh. Moments pass, and with one strong pull of the udder, it releases the sweet, white nectar of the udder into Unga's mouth. Holy shit! Oh. This is hot. <laughs> what? Unga pulls his mouth away from the dripping udder, swallowing a mouthful of milk and wiping a streak of the white juice from their jaw. Unga! Unga gives Gurunga a double thumbs up. Then a bull charges forward, stabbing its long horn into Unga's side and crushing his torso. The cows all stomp on the warm corpse of Unga, who still has milk dripping from his mouth. Gurunga watches their friend get crushed to death by a horde of cows, shrugs, then walks away. Holy, holy fuck. Holy fuck. I wanna go home. The two hold hands and close their eyes hard. Cut to interior living room night. Hugh and Lorraine hold hands on the couch. Lorraine opens her eyes. Hugh? Yeah? Oh, we're back in the living room. Hugh opens his eyes. Oh, thank God. He falls back into the couch. Hugh? Yeah, Lorraine? Am I covering your fucking boner? Hugh grabs a pillow. <laughs> Fuck shit, pretend you didn't see that. Sure thing, buddy. Ha! <laughs> <Bonk. laughs> oh, uh. What the fuck? <laughs> you hear that typing? That's me typing a letter to my therapist, Nick Hellier. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Do you understand me? Oh, God. <laughs> Woo! What made you think of that? <laughs> Were you on acid? No, no. Come clean right now. <laughs> I'm, oh, I wasn't gosh. on acid. I just. Oh God. I, I think about. Just drink a lot. Oh, Maybe God. a little too much. Ew! Ew! The sweet wow. nectar. Anyway. Why do I feel like this was a dream you had, and you woke up and be like, "I'm gonna write that shit." Nah. Why? Why would you think that? <laughs> it's just dream esque. <laughs> Too dream -esque. Did you take one of those magic mushroom chocolates? Nick? No, I have not. Not yet. No, he had some. Chocolate. He had magic milk. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> milk. Milk. Milk is an actual product. What? There's an alternate milk brand, and it's milk. milk. That's a crime. <laughs> That's enough. I... You're right. Capitalism has to be stopped. This is our call. Socialism's the way, friends. This is it. This is your sign. This is the line? Yes.
<laughs> See? It right now. Nick's story I made am, it the line. I am drawing the line right now because of milk and Nick's script. Thank you so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus come. <laughs> I'm never watching the movie Milk again. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh no. Oh um, no. Amy Lynn has redeemed a hydrate. Everybody take a drink of water. And then she also redeemed a dehydrate and James dehydrated. Oh. So two more drinks. Oh and wow. If you guessed future for my script, take a drink. <sighs> Although it is the future of milk drinking, straight from the tea. Wow. It's illegal. I don't understand yeah. how that's the future of milk. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, I will become president of the world, and I will make it illegal globally. Thank you. Thank it's you. On, it is on site, Nick Hellier. I promise Doesn't you. Doesn't it cow- taste bad, though? <sighs> yes. That straight cow milk tastes... I, I, I think I've tasted it before. It tastes horrible. It wouldn't be sweet or you anything. Do. Yeah. I, I live in Georgia. <laughs> I live in Georgia. There are farms. Port... <laughs> When we're kids, we go to farms for a little science thing, okay? They gave us fresh milk. That was it. Okay? I don't I don't do that that milk that milk stuff, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a, yeah, I have a line glad. I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. But yeah, that's not what I do. Okay? Um, that's not what I do. Ex, hey, ex, no judgment, ex, okay? I think I think we need to hear you say that it was from a glass confirmed, please. I, mean, I think we need it was, to hear it you was say from it. a glass, like one of those little pitcher things, you know that. Mm. Old okay. Okay. Western type thing. All right. All right. We'll buy it for now. <laughs> hey, I, I, we we don't do that over here. I'm just saying that we don't do that. No. I sure hope not. I think th- this has. Um, I don't think I'll ever be the same after reading this piece, Nick. Thank God I don't drink milk anymore. <laughs> yeah, oat milk's where it's at. Yep, true. And uh, Sophie, despite your huge change in like lifestyle after reading that, it is your script up next. So <laughs> put, on, put on a brave face <laughs> and introduce yourself. This is so fucking. This piece. I think we just have to read it. Okay. Bella. Okay. Wait, Natalie, do we get to guess? What? what? Oh, we right. <clears throat> sure. Um, is, is Toe Munching Fishies the title of this piece? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, chat. Toe Munching Fishies. Is that set in the past or the future? Or does it take a trip to the past or the future? Future. Future. Past. Uh, future. I'm going to go past. All right. The votes are in. Let's see what the answer is. Take it away. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Cast list. Uh, Natalie will be playing Bella. Sarah will be playing Ramona. Xavier will be playing Tobias. Girl slash Jamie will be played by Amy Lynn. And I will read stage directions. Okay. Exterior, dock, day. Ramona, 31, sits on the edge of a dock with a young girl, Bella, 7, sitting between her legs. Ramona has her arms wrapped tightly around Lisa, and they both have their feet dangling into the water. The dock is on the edge of a small and peaceful lake, the sound of birds chirping and the water washing over the stone shores. What if the fishies come up and bite our feet off? A fish biting off your whole foot? Now that would be impressive. Yeah, and, and then they would take the feet down to the bottom of the ocean, and all their fishy kids will eat them. I think there are worse uses for feet than to feed an entire family of fish, don't you think? Yeah, like stepping on bugs. That's a very good point. Because bugs are squishy when you step on them. It's gross. You shouldn't step on them, honey. Just because they're small doesn't mean they're not alive or don't feel pain. I know. It was an accident, Mommy. I'm sorry. It's okay. I've accidentally stepped on bugs, too. Beat. 
Do bugs go to heaven too? Ramona considers this question, having never thought about it before. Maybe. If humans go to heaven, I don't see why bugs can't too. Is heaven real? Beat. To be completely honest, I don't know. I don't think anyone has a real way of knowing for sure. That's why some people choose to have faith that something is waiting for them after life ends and others don't. But what do you think? I think we create our own heaven or hell out of the lives we live. There might be more after we die and there might not be. In my personal opinion, I don't think either possibility should decide how we act. Bella furrows her eyebrows and thinks about this long and hard. Then her face lights up as she has an idea. Mom, if you're making your own heaven, can I be in it too? <laughs> of course you can. The scene fades to black and Ramona squeezes Bella even tighter and kisses the top of her head. The echoes of their laughter morph into the beeping of a heart monitor. Interior, hospital room, day. We open our eyes to see blue walls and yellow curtains. A TV in the upper corner of the room showing the lake and the dock we were just sitting on. The beeping speeds up. The bed we're lying in has a white has a white frame and railings. We look towards the right and see a young woman sitting in a chair, asleep with a book open on her lap. She looks like Bella. We call out to her, but her voice sounds different, wispy and croaky. Bella. The girl stirs. Bella. The beeping gets faster. We start shaking. Bella, where are we? What happened? The girl finally wakes up and looks alarmed. She rushes over to the bedside. Grandma, it's okay. I need you to relax, okay? Please. We hear Ramona start to wheeze and cry as a nurse rushes into the room and comes up to the bed. I'm sorry, I think it'd be best if you left the room. Interior, hospital hallway, day. The girl, Jamie, 23, exits the hospital room, shaken and distraught. She sits down in a seat uh, in what looks like a waiting room area. She closes her eyes and gathers herself. I know it's normal for dementia patients to get aggressive sometimes. You can blame them all you want, but how would you react if you thought you were living your normal, youthful life, then you wake up in this cold, stale hospital room 60 years older with a tube in your urethra? Tobias, 23, is walking down the hallway, a bandage over his nose, pushing an empty wheelchair with one hand and holding a cup holder containing two coffee cups in the other. He sees Jamie and makes a beeline towards her. I just wish I wasn't always seen as the imposter in my grandma's eyes. She recognizes me less and less. Hey, you're here. Jamie opens her eyes, not expecting to be spoken to. Then she sees Tobias and sighs. Good to see you too. Sorry, it's just... My grandma thought I was my mom again. She freaked out, so I'm just... Yeah. No, it's okay. Want a coffee? Jamie looks at the cup holder in his hand, confused. I got two because I thought I need to to make it through my shift today, but I'm already pretty wired, and I'm only halfway through my first one. Sure. Thanks. Tobias locks the wheelchair, parks it next to James's chair, then sits in the seat next to her, holding out the second coffee cup to her. She takes it and takes a long sip. Uh, how's your, um, nose? Oh, it's great. I've gotten really good at breathing through my mouth. Now when I walk to work, that sewage grate by my, by the back doesn't even face me. So I kind of, uh, did you a favor then. <laughs> Tobias looks at her, shocked, but amused. I'm kidding. If you ever need me to sniff something for you, let me know. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. I don't think you, I didn't think you actually come today. I said I would. I know. I even bought her those stupid flowers from the gift store. You can go in there and check. It's okay. I believe you. I wouldn't agree to our deal to visit her every Sunday, then not follow through. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. That's good. It means you're trustworthy. That being said, this deal is only going to last as long as it takes for your nose to heal. 
The visceral sense of guilt I feel when I look at your swollen and bandaged face is a necessary part of me completing my end of this bargain. That's fair. Cut to interior hospital room one week later, day. Janie is sitting in her seat next to her grandmother's bed. Her grandmother seems fixed on the TV in the corner of the room, but she seems content and comfortable in the silence. A fresh, bu- a fresh bouquet of flowers sits on the bedside table. Janie is eating a banana and watching the TV as well. Then the door opens and Tobias walks in with a tray of food. Room service! Oh, thank goodness I could eat a horse! Jamie stares at Tobias's face incredulously. This bitch had on a bigger bandage than he did the week before. Tell me how that makes any fucking sense at all. What are you guys watching? Anime. It's so fascinating. Interior, hospital hallway, another week later, day. Tobias is standing behind the front desk. His bandage seems especially convex today. Jamie enters from a hallway to the left with a bouquet of pink flowers in her hands. She sees him and glares, marching right up to him. What are you doing? Looking at a file. No, I mean your stupid bandage. What do you mean? It's getting bigger and bigger. Either you're a drama queen or you're intentionally pretending like your nose is getting worse in order to get me to keep visiting my grandma every week. Which is diabolical and opportunistic, by the way. How dare you fake an injury when you're surrounded by people who- I almost knocked over my water bottle, sorry. (laughs) You almost what? I almost knocked over my water bottle. (laughs) Sorry. I was so into this. Going back. How dare you fake an injury when you're surrounded by people who are facing real medical issues? You're supposed to be a professional, but no! You're over here blackmailing people and conning them with reverse healing. You know what? I could sue you. I probably won't because that sounds like a lot of money and a lot of time that I don't have, but I could! Dude, I just ran out of other bandages. I promise. It's not that deep. Jamie narrows her eyes at him and stares him down like that for a minute. (sighs) Exterior. Graveyard. One year later. Day. There is a group of people dressed in black. Jamie holds a bouquet of flowers in her hands and is crying. Tobias comes up behind her and puts a consoling hand on her shoulder. He still has a bandage over his nose. The last bouquet of flowers I'll ever give her. Tobias pulls her into a hug, and she cries into his shoulder. Then they break apart, and Tobias looks into her face. I know this is a bad way to reveal this, but I think I can finally take this off now. He takes off the bandage to reveal a perfectly intact nose and a patch of skin that's paler than the rest of him, slightly pruny from the constant adhesive being applied to it. Jamie's eyes widen, and a flurry of emotions wash over her face. She looks enraged and shocked. I know what you're going to say. I lied to you. I exposed the situation. I'm a terrible human being. Now those other statements are completely valid and fair, but aren't you glad to maintain a beautiful, constant relationship with your loving grandmother during her last year on the planet? Wouldn't you have regretted not seeing her every week? Jamie stands there for a second in shell-shocked speechlessness. Then she seems to lose her balance a little bit. When Tobias tries to take her by the shoulders and stabilize her, she punches him right in the nose. Tobias yelps and blood pours down his nose. Jamie walks away. The end. Yo! What a beautiful friendship. (laughs) Okay. I don't know what the fuck happened. Oh my god. He's gonna have a fucked up nose. Yeah. This might not make sense to people who weren't here that one time because there was only like three of us. Um Yeah. Anyways. I well give us some backstory. Tell about the story. Uh the previous episode. Okay, um, and the other one, she's, like, running away, we don't know why, and then she, basically she ends up smashing Tobias's face in with her trumpet case that she's holding, um, and that's why his nose is injured, and then they strike up this deal where, 
she comes to visit her grandmother every week and buys her flowers. Um, and it works because she feels guilty about breaking, breaking his nose. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Night. I thought, I thought this was an awesome sequel. I don't know what oh, you're yeah. talking about, how it's huh? crazy. Because <laughs> it started off so serious. It fits so well. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, it's good. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. No chaos here, BB. I love it. I think it was funny. Yeah. The yeah. idea that he, for a full year, convinced <laughs> her that his nose was broken was pretty funny. <laughs> oh my god. This, I, this isn't like a sequel that I'm going to take seriously. I think if I were to write or expand on the original piece, I don't know if this would necessarily fit into that but it was fun to write and it was fun to hear y'all read it so thank you yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> james says of course sophie was the only one i got wrong yeah if you've uh guessed future take it no if you guessed wait past. it was kind of both oh no it oh, was everybody can just drink for this one it was past because <laughs> it was the past memory right yeah so it was past so i, I think i got it wrong I don't even remember what I guess. Everyone drink. Yeah, it was <laughs> But yeah, so that was good. If you don't like, that's what we're here for, to read it through. You don't want to use it. It's all good. I liked Thank it. You. Yeah. You have a good, have a good friendship going. I can see it. Yeah. I, I thought the first scene was adorable uh, between yeah. Ramona and Bella. Let's move on to our final piece. Thank you. <laughs> Xavier, Pace, take it away. Okay. This is Your Eyes of Paradox. A.O. Cast is... Well, I'll let you... I can read the cast members you guys can because it really doesn't matter. Um, the Master is Amy Lynn. Anima is me. Drea is Sarah. Dudley is Natalie. Shasti is Nick. Percy is Sophie. And disregard the at the bottom rating. So, okay. What is your guess? Future. 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 Past. Past. Future, but in Bane's voice from the Dark Knight Rises. James Thorne says pass. Michael James Hayward. Michael James. <laughs> Michael Scott Hayward. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody voted? I think, I think so. so. Cool. Let's let's kick this in the And I'll, I'll do the narration. Cool. Okay. All right, here we go. Exterior. Desolate land. Two people walking through the land, one leading the other. A young man called Anima trails behind. Master, where are we going? We've been traveling for days. Patience is key. Once we get there, I'll tell you everything. Is this about Aura? The master leads him to an abandoned home, walking towards the back, where there is a pool. Everything has Aura. It's how you access it's it's how you access it that's important. Magic and miracles run through one's aura. The master begins to write in the dirt near the pool. The pool begins to glow. Anima rushes over to to look. Yeah, I, I get that. But what's really going on? The world is ending. We felt the waning of Earth's aura. Many have tried to stop it. So what's going to happen? You remember chaos theory? Anima begins to see something open at the bottom of the pool. Find the one who escaped death. Tell her it worked. All will be explained then. The master is going to push Anima into the pool. Just as he turns around, 
He falls back, grabbing his master's arm. What's going on? You have to let go. Emma pulls his master forward, but the master spins countering, counter separating them. Not on opposite sides. I need more to be explained. No time. The master rushes in, throwing a quick jab. Anima sees it and dodges, locks the arm and goes in for a left hook. The master catches his hand. You still have a lot to learn. They separate instantly. Anima's winded. How? This shall be your last lesson. Watch carefully. Anima attacks the master with a kick. He blocks with ease. The master catches his leg and throws Anima near the pool. Anima gets up and throws a fury of punches and kicks. All are blocked and countered. They instantly separate again. Last thing I can show you. Anima picks himself up off the ground and gets into a fighting stance. The master motions his palm and hits the air with it. Great pressure hits Anima, knocking him, knocking the breath out of him. The master walks over to Anima. All you need is what you already have. And remember those who possess great aura, you can see it in their eyes. The master pushes Anima in the pool. He is sucked into something. I am sorry for what I inevitably will put you through. Anima is thrown through a wormhole. Cut to exterior, pool party, night. Many young adults gather around the pool as it glows. Others partying throughout the backyard. Anima comes out of the pool. Grasping for air, he pulls himself out of the pool. Dude, that was crazy. Where am I? At the best party known to man. Ah, you smell like piss. A young girl walks up. You call beer breath. Well, beer seems to suck. Depending on the vibe. What's your name? Dia, and yours? Anima. I... Purple. No, they're blue. You're weird. Let's get you up. As they are getting up, someone walks through the crowd. The party goers make way for him. Hey, Dia, who's this guy? Ew, Shasti. His name is Anima. That's a weird name. What's his aura level? Someone from the crowd hands him a phone. Let's see if he can top me. He points his phone at Anima. He laughs. <laughs> Your aura is at eight. <laughs> Shasti throws the phone behind him. Everyone laughs. Is this what you do? Harass people so you can feel some type of self-worth? What did you say? You heard me. All right, you're asking for it. Shasti throws a punch. Anna, Anna can see it before it, even, it is even thrown. He looks at Shasti's eyes. They are yellow. Anna dodges the punch. He looks around, sees everyone, takes the punch instead. He hits the ground. And that's why you don't mess with an aura level of 800. Everyone goes back to Parya and leaves Anima on the ground. Dia helps him up. Are you okay? Fine. A world, a world based on aura level. No wonder it's going to shit. Here, I'll lock you out. Dia walks Anima out. As they are walking, a girl walks out. Hey, I saw what you did. What do you mean? How you dodged that punch, then still took the punch? What's your name? It's Percy, and yours is Anima. My aura allows me to see a few steps in the future. Well, I'm looking for... The one who escaped death? Exactly. I can take you there. My car's over there. Hop in. I'll take you. I have a feeling you'll need me. Sure, whatever. They all go to an all-matte black twin-turbo 2.9 liter V6 Prius. What? The world is going to shit. At least I'm fuel efficient. What year is it? It's 2021, and the Orans rule the government. Fuck. I gotta go back to the future. Like the movie? Ah! <laughs> Cut to exterior, poolside, night. Hey, Duds, dude. I don't feel so good. Huh, man, you just gotta drink more water. It feels or like more was... beer. More beer. <laughs> it feels like I was hit by a truck. Shasi lifts up his shirt and there's a bruise in the shape of a fist. Shasi throws up. Near a chair, a phone a phone shows the number eight, and the number begins to climb continuously. End. Ooh. Ooh. Why are you at there? I'm so curious. Uh, I just felt like that's where it should end. <laughs>
I, Natalie I would... said, fuck beer. <laughs> I more <laughs> water. I think I really jumped out there. There was no drunk on in the chat, only only grandma. I'm sorry. <laughs> more beer. It's all good. It was funny. Responsible grandma. More you're beer. Like, you're oh. like, oh, dude, just drink more water. Wait, wait. Beer. <laughs> Auto oh. play. Uh, water is taboo. <laughs> Future is beer, friends, and she's ready. It's right now. The beer. beer and milk. That's a good combination. Mm. That's, that's I'm great. I'm physically ill. This is too much. I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. Awesome. X, that was a really cool start to a piece. I'm excited to see more. Like Please that. write more. I was so, just, the name I, Anima, it cracked I, me up. Because it... It what? almost sounded it like, like Anima. Anima. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I think I forgot the meaning behind Anima, what it means. But that's why I chose it. It has to do yeah. with, like, your, how you view your persona, right? The anima. Yeah. For, like, in Latin, it means, like, spirit and stuff like that. So, yeah. that's why. Cool. Hell yeah. Well, awesome, Bye. guys. That was our, cool. our show this week. For those who said past, you got it right. You got to go back to the future. Past Samurai Jack. Yeah, I just wanted to do something light, so yeah. That's so that good. It, it's like, it's the perfect opening sequence to a movie like, um, like that that era of movies where it was like, Divergence and Hunger Games and like this is number four or I am number four right I'm before number four. that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, those. Like I can see it yeah. perfectly sitting in there. Yeah. Now well A L stands for Anima's Origin. I just didn't I just changed it so you guys wouldn't guess past. Oh. Oh. Someone's origin is so yeah. Love cool. It, well cool. That was our stream tonight, guys. Uh, thank you so much for everybody hanging out in the chat. Why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? I'm Amy Lynn Ferreira, and I hate how people got Malk in the past. <laughs> I'm Nick, and I Girl. love how people got Malk in the past. <laughs> oh, I'm Sophie, and I'm hunting y'all down with the battle axe and a gun. <laughs> I'm Sarah, and I've been a barb. <laughs> I'm Xavier, and there's some historical inadequacies in Nick's past, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Natalie, and I've been taking us all to space if you have a pet, and we're saved for 2031. And we're all barbs, oh. so God bless. Hell yeah. And together we are. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we have streams every Saturday night where we do prompt writing and presenting our dramatic scripts and poetry and whatnot. This week's prompt was uh, suggested by Drumroll. Who was it? Amy Lynn? Uh, I think so i'm pretty oh. sure like super early on i was like i'm i'm pretty sure it's one of mine <laughs> hell yeah yeah <laughs> and uh this is the part of the show where we announce next week's prompt too which does anybody know off the top of their head just dialogue just dialogue just dialogue just dialogue <laughs> just dialogue <laughs> dialogue just dialogue i don't remember ever talking about that being a prompt <laughs> it's just well, dialogue it now. just dialogue gotcha it's it just dialogue. now next week just dialogue just dialogue we're gonna be reading so many open scenes <laughs> that's what i thought when i read it i was like oh god well, we're I mean, going back to first semester but oh, they're gonna be better. better than open scenes there's a lot you can do with that because open scenes was just like one word things like just dialogue can be anything 
Yeah? Well, no stage uh, directions, just dialogue. Yeah, it's just no stage directions. It's gonna be weird. Just dialogue. Just dialogue. Can we still do, like, location? Just you have to put in your dialogue. Just dialogue, Sophie. Just dialogue. It's like improv when you say where you are, what you're doing, and who you're with. Right, right, sure. Okay. It is just, like, improv, but it's just dialogue. dialogue. And, here, and here we are in the intoxicated reader's end of the stream on a Saturday night talking about the prompt for next week which is just dialogue, just dialogue. You know what, how do, you know how do the viewers is? know that this isn't just dialogue like this isn't like a skit or something that we've written because we are because we are dialoguing right we now. are dialoguing we could have written this previously to surprise right them. here right now this of course you never know. It's, it's all scripted form. it's all <laughs> <laughs> this is this is reality tv we are taking because... over the keeping up with the oh announcement this is us keeping this is fuck. This is us taking over the keeping up with the Kardashian slot on the E network. Thank you so much for the support. We are taking this to the TV. Can I be Kanye West? <laughs> yeah. Um, What's I it will gonna be, be called? Keeping up with Chris intoxicated. Jenner. Yeah. It's called I, just dialogue. I, I, <laughs> it is just dialogue. Dibs on <laughs> So what do we do? We just sit there and talk. <laughs> it's gonna be the podcast episode. <gasps> oh. No, but for like a bunch X, of it's not just talk. It's just dialogue. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be behind the scenes on this show, producer, stuff like that. <laughs> that means yes. all the sure. Check Big out rough. our social medias. <laughs> <laughs> Down below, we've got links to our Instagram, our Twitter, our YouTube, our YouTube. We'll be having some some stuff coming out soon. <laughs> Ooh, not milk related. God. Uh, so make sure you keep up with that and following us and sharing all of our stuff. We are better with your help, audience. True. Sure. You. Yeah. Sarah, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, I was gonna say I was. You're saying like we're on YouTube, and I was gonna be like, find us on LinkedIn, Google Plus, <laughs> MySpace, Not Google Plus. Yeah, MySpace. I tried to use Google Plus when it came out. <laughs> Facebook Messenger. Ooh. You guys, you guys can message me on Venmo. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> for for sixty nine cents, you too can join the drunk online club. Venmo, Hadley Milton. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright guys, that's our stream. <laughs> Tune in next Saturday at 6 p.m. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Bye, Good night, guys. guys. Bye. Ciao. Bye.